Welcome back to the Geeky Chocolate Extravaganza. Because we are focusing things all about the home and doing this together as your family, we didn't want to do a celebration without the one true ingredient that is truly all about the home, focusing on bread. Yes. This became like the anthem food for 2020. I know, <laughs> who would have thought, right? I bread. Felt, I felt like it, bring out, it brought out all of like the inner grandmas in us. We were stuck at home I know. and we had flour, Few people ran out of yeast, but don't worry, we took care of that. Yeah. But it became such a part of our hearts, yeah. right? And I think there's a part of us too when when there's this level of uncertainty in the world. I don't know about you, but I seek comfort. Yes. And what is more comfort food than just bread? Yes. Or or also just for me, it's so symbolic of breaking bread with somebody, right? There's that gathering of just of bread. I don't know. Absolutely. We can go on and on. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I did not want to do this without our dearest friend Charity. Thank she has you. like been my rock in so many different ways but also she has such an approach the same love the same admiration that we have for the kitchen and yeah. food you can find her on instagram at a vibrant life but she is i feel like she's just in every aspect all around the community oh, here you're doing so, so many things sharing your story sharing your message and just bringing people back to the kitchen because it really is just a, a special place to be yeah yeah, and this is my happy place. Oh, so good. When you just said heaven, <laughs> like I'm there. I love it. So what are we gonna be making? Today? Okay, so here's I know it's all about chocolate, you guys, and we will get to the chocolate. We're gonna make some amazing chocolate sourdough bread. But what I really want you guys to have is a basic understanding of just the simple sourdough recipe. Now I know a lot of people are like, okay, well, it's something I'd like to get involved with, yes. but how hard is it? Yes. Okay, here's, the, I'm gonna speak just openly with you guys. You could get on the internet, you could Google sourdough recipes, and you would honestly find a, a, a myriad of different techniques, of different ways to do everything. So all I'm sharing with you guys is not the right way, it's just, it's just my way. But you have instilled a confidence in me. I've taken several classes, I've taught several classes, but after hearing you and seeing like how approachable you do this so it's not just like good this, you've done it's such a good easy. job of making this attainable for the mess that's the hope right it's just it's this idea that if you guys honestly i hope when you guys sit here you'll be like that's it that's that's <laughs> all you do and i'm like yes it's, it's that yes. simple yes so what we're going to do is we're going to just master the classic sourdough bread first and then we're gonna do it again, but this time we'll add in chocolate chips and a little bit of cocoa, add a little bit, we'll make a few small adjustments. But my feeling is once you have those two things down, you can do anything. You can do anything. Absolutely. Anything you want. So the first thing that you're gonna start with is, I love the smell of it. Some people don't. My kids think it's yes. disgusting. This is just a sourdough starter. Good old basic sourdough starter. Now some of you may be like, okay, well, stop right there. No. How do I even get that? So I've got a recipe. Can we put it on Absolutely. your? Okay. Yep. You guys can make your own sourdough starter at home. This is actually, here's what got me so interested. I was like, wait a minute. Okay. There's just flour and there's just water. That's it. Yet this little concoction here is what rose bread for thousands of years. Like that's it. Yes. So here's what's interesting. I have a master's degree in nutrition science and I did my thesis on bacteria and probiotics. That's what got me started. And people were like, what got you started? I was like, well, it was bacteria. Like, well, isn't it crazy how we've also complicated the simple things, you know, like thinking, okay, I have to do all these things when essentially this has always been here. It's right? always been here. Right. So I started making this and then and then I'll, I'll tell more about no, what no. bread means to my family, but this is just flour and water and bacteria that's been captured from the air. So, so say when someone says, I have a starter that was brought over on the plane yeah. and it's been passed on for generation to what is the difference between that and this? Time. Okay. Like that that's it. <laughs> In fact, here's what's really interesting. They did this experiment and they they sent flour and water to different little um places all over the world. Just flour and water to see how would the bread taste differently. And there was a different taste. And guess what they decided the factor was? The bacteria that I have on my hands. From you. From me or from our environment. I mean bacteria is fascinating. No. This is not a bacteria <laughs> class. This is no. chocolate. No. Stay focused. No, no, this is good. Stay focused. Because I think it's so important to understand the elements of a simple ingredient that yeah. we oftentimes take for granted right. what really like when we taste a homemade piece of bread or we take something out of the oven, there's much more to it than just the ingredients. Yeah. It's a part of us. It's a part of us. And I love that. So you can make your own starter 
from scratch if you want to. Okay. For me, that was a big thing because I was like, I'm going to kill it. I know I'm going to kill it, but just knowing in the back of my mind, okay, I can, I can make it from scratch if I want to. You can also dehydrate the starter if you guys have it. You can also freeze it. So there's, there's, no, there's no excuse. You there have you several ways to there use you it. Go. <laughs> or just find somebody that is a sweet neighbor that has starter. And these yes. days, it seems like a lot of people Everyone do. somehow got their hands on something. Okay, <laughs> so that's all we're going to start with. Now, I've got a scale. Okay, you guys, here's the thing. I hate to start any class by saying there's certain things you have to have. <laughs> we we preach the love for a scale for okay. many years. So if you're around and you've been watching for a long time, you should have already purchased, okay. purchased the scale. If we haven't convinced you, this class will be the one. Yes, it's the one thing. Now, I know when I used to teach classes, I taught lots of classes here. So many. I used to have two types of people in my class. The people that are like, oh, we just throw things together, this and that, which I love. And then the other people are like, Charity, please just stick to the recipe. Please, just stick to the recipe. For those of you and the other, both of you, you need a scale. Brent, right? this is a little bit like a science. And once you have it, you'll realize, oh, this was so easy. But I think if we put it in this terms, knowing that you're going to have less dishes and less things to That's worry huge. about, that scale will actually be your best friend because you're not washing every little spoon, every little cup. Yes. And all those things. It's so. magical because yes. of the cleanup. So I've got my starter. And there's really just three ingredients, you guys. It's flour, it's water, and it's salt. It's that simple. So I'm gonna start with 150 grams of starter. And you guys can't see my scale, which just turned off. <laughs> so we've got another bowl. Okay. Let's let's grab the other bowl. We'll reset this. It turned off right as long. we yep, yeah, right as we set it to zero. So 150 grams of starter. Now, again, you guys, if you're gonna Google different recipes. Very, very, very few recipes are gonna start with this much starter. Here's the reason I start with this much starter. I wanted to make a loaf in a day. Okay. That was it. Like I was like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do the whole 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever. Like just give me, give me a one day loaf of bread. And so just adding more starter is essentially adding more bacteria and the bacteria is what creates the bubbles. So some people might message in and they're like, wait, 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 where's the yeast? This is it. This is it. There's no yeast. You don't need to go buy yeast. The, the bacteria is what creates the bubbles in the bread. So it's all right. 150 grams of starter. It's that simple. I'm going to set my scale back to zero. And then you're going to do 10 grams of salt. Are you particular with salt? Like, are you? Are am you, I allowed to say? Yes, am I allowed to yes. say how particular I want, I am? I want to know what okay. you recommend. Um, because there are only three ingredients in this um, recipe, the salt actually does matter. I love Redmond salt. Okay. Like Redmond salt, there's just, I don't know, there's something about it. It's, it's flavor. And trust me, guys, it seems so silly. That's about a tablespoon of salt. Have you ever made a loaf of bread without salt? It's what? Well, I act, so I have a, a crescent roll recipe that I follow, swear by it, but the salt is in the ingredients, but it's barely written in the directions. And so as I'm following it, I've oftentimes like forgotten it. Forgotten it. And I can taste a huge dip. Like there have been times it's where I'm half tempted to throw the roll yes. away. Yes. Because I'm like, this isn't my roll. This I is know. not it. And it's so like, absolutely. You have to have salt. Yes. And the right salt. So I do love Redmond. Okay. I love Redmond. We salt. love Redmond. We sell Redmond. They're we fantastic. support Redmond. Yeah. Way to go, Redmond. Okay. <laughs> so now I'm just setting this back to zero. Every time I add a new ingredient, I'm just setting it back to zero. So we've got starter, we've got salt, and now I've got water around here so okay. right in front of me. So now we're just it's just lukewarm water and I'm gonna add 300 grams. I'm just watching it as I'm pouring this on the scale. So oftentimes when I've done like yeast style breads or like it needs to be like a specific temperature, are you as particular with your temperature of water when you're using the sourdough start? I'm or? so glad you asked that. So here's the deal with temperature. Now you guys, if you're if you're not super com com confident and you go over like I just did in my kitchen, Look at Take your mason jar Take lid. It. There you go. <laughs> and now I'm back. Perfect. I had a little too much water. Just took it up. So here's what people need to recognize with temperature. Okay. Again, we're going to go back to the bacteria. I hate to do it, but no, we it's want going it. to react more quickly with warm water. So let's say I'm going to start my loaf first thing in the morning, and I really wanted that to increase that first rise. I'm going to use really warm water. Um, but let's say I'm like, okay, gosh, I'm going to be at the dentist when I think it's ready, I want to slow down okay. that process, then I'll use really cold water. Got so it. it's nice to kind of have a little bit of leeway with your water, but typically I just use tap water. That's another thing. You guys, you can get fancy with these breads or you can keep it simple. I've tried distilled water. I've tried reverse osmosis water. I've tried chilled water. I mean, all of it. Guess what? Tap water, right, right from my tap, room temperature water, it works beautifully. 
Like, but it just slows down that rising Yes. Process. So okay. you can you can kind of manipulate it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We, we did a test with like hot hot water, which was gonna kill our yeast. Yes. And then we did lukewarm, and then you know a chilled. And I was like, we did a time lapse to see how oh, brilliant. amazing it was to show the difference because I think sometimes we're like, well, if warm is good, hot is better. Right. But it went opposite. Brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There you go. She's so, the master, no, really. That was Candace, in, in case you so <laughs> I just got to watch it. Okay. But, so now we're just gonna add flour. And it's 450 grams of flour. I like to do half bread flour, half all-purpose flour. Okay. That's what I have found is just kind of the, the secret magic for me. Okay. Again, there's all these different recipes out there. You guys can find whatever you want. So, but yours is beautiful, so we want yours. So we're just gonna stick with it. So I just have bread flour right here. I just need my scale to get to 450 grams. So I don't care that much. Okay. Of, it's like okay, exactly half. Oh, you're not you're not worried. I'm not so 450 total. total. So okay. here's what I do. I got a scoop. It's probably going to be a roughly four of these scoops. So okay. there's almost half, not quite. I'll throw a little yeah. bit more in there, and then I'm going to switch over to all-purpose flour right here. And again, I'm just watching my scale. I'm just wanting it to get to 450 grams. And if I go over, I can easily just pull a little bit out. I'm almost there. It's just sitting on top. There it's we go. Mixed in, yes. Okay, so that that's it. That's all we're gonna do. And you guys already are probably like, wait, that's that's it? Yes, <laughs> that's it. There it is. So I'm gonna pull out my KitchenAid right here. And I've got the dough hook on. And I'm just gonna mix it like that. And this is just gonna mix for a few minutes. So let's go over really quickly the timing of the bread, okay? okay? So that. from the time that you mix your dough, you've got your first rise, which is your long rise, yep. and then you've got your second rise. That's developing the flavors, exactly. right? Exactly, okay. yep. And that's really letting that bacteria start to break down that gluten, create those bubbles. So your first rise is gonna be six to eight hours, okay? okay? So now people are like, okay, well, when am I gonna make this? When I teach classes, I tell them you've got two options. You can make it first thing in the morning, right when you wake up, and then you can have fresh bread that night, or make it right before you go to bed, and then in the morning, do your second rise, and you can bake it in the morning, okay? So let's assume we're gonna make this first thing in the morning, we're gonna let the bread rise for six to eight hours. Okay. And then I'm gonna show you what happens from the magic of time. <laughs> I've got a loaf ready to go. Perfect, okay. always planned. <laughs> so we'll, we'll show you guys how to shape it, then you let it rise okay. for about two to three hours, and then you bake it. Okay. So there's your set. First rise, second rise, bake. Okay. okay. So, what we're gonna do? When do you generally? Because there's something very consistent about that. I turn on Instagram. I see your vibrant life on there. I see your personal study in the morning, and then soon after, you're pulling bread. Out. Yeah. So I usually will do it right before I go to bed, and I'm an early riser. So, so what I can do is. Literally, you guys, if you were in my kitchen, this would be going. I'd be in my bathroom right now, brushing and flossing my teeth. <laughs> like, I'm getting ready for bed. Okay. So then in the morning, I'm ready to go. I shake the bread, and I get up pretty early, so that's easy for me. Yeah. And then I can bake it a few hours later. Yeah. And then I think sometimes, too, people, when they think of time on the clock, they think of our time. It's not our time. It is, it is time on a clock, but it's not, it's not really our interactive time. Sure. Okay? Sure. So this loaf is, is pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna turn it off, I'm gonna show the camera here what we got, and let this, and it's different than the regular dough that people are probably used to. It's a little bit clumpy, but it's all mixed together, okay? And is it? It's, it's fairly sticky. It's, it's not, not like I'm pulling it like by my hand, right. but my, I can tell like, like that, I've got a little bit. A little stickiness. Mm -hmm. So what I want you guys to see is almost how clumpy that is right now. The gluten is gonna sit, it's gonna sit for a little bit. So we've got one more step. It's called the pull and turn. You're gonna wet your hand, you're gonna pull and turn the dough. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Experts say you wanna do that four times within the first hour, okay? okay. So that's really every 15 minutes. For me, I'm like, okay, I can't baby this. <laughs> if I get one or two pull and turns, done, great. Like, okay. I'll go say my prayers, come out, do the pull and turn, I'm good, I'm going to bed. Okay. So assuming that we've done that, which we haven't, we will, then I would just cover it and I would leave it for the first rise. Plastic wrap? Oh, Plastic wrap. Right? Because I just want easy, I yeah. honestly put a plate. Okay. I just Love take it. a plate right over top of it and then, great to great and then I'm good to go. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is we are going to get ready and we're going to make a second loaf. So we're going to pause for a minute, get our starter ready to go, and then we'll come back and do a second loaf. Ready? 
Okay, so now we're back and you guys have mastered ideally, right? The, the classic sourdough. We got it. But now we want to get into chocolate. Of course. So you're like, well, how do we make sourdough a sweet bread? Okay. You guys can add anything you want. So I've got my regular recipe and then two little tweaks to this recipe. Okay. Fat and sugar are both flavor, right? So yes. let's add a little sugar to make this a sweeter bread and let's add a little fat because we don't, we didn't have that in the no, first bread, no, okay? No, no, it's very simple. So the only addition is some sugar and some oil. Okay. So we're gonna start the exact same way we did before. Our scale is on. We're, our scale is on. <laughs> we're at, I'm gonna do 150 grams of starter. And don't worry you guys, um, we will address how to take care of the starter. I do think that for some people they're like, oh, it's actually taking care of that Well, starter. I think when they look at it as like, this is alive, this is something I'm gonna that kill it. feels really like, I mean, I, we had a class once where we, like our instructor said, go home and name it, give it like some character. Cute. So then it's like, you remember to take care of it you, because if it's a, like an inanimate object yes. in there, but give it a feeling. So she, Sally the starter. I love so it. We hope everyone gets a Sally on Yes. <laughs> Get a Sally going in your kitchen. Okay. So now I'm just doing the salt the exact same way we did with the regular recipe, 10 grams of salt. And now here's where we're going to add a little bit of sugar. I don't make any adjustments to the recipe for the sugar like I will for the oil. You guys will okay. know what I'm talking about in just a second. So I'm going to add roughly two tablespoons of sugar or roughly 20 grams, 25 grams of sugar. You can throw a little, I mean, we're feeling a little sassy today, right? It's chocolate extravagant. We all need some sugar. Let's make rice. it sweeter. Okay. So now normally I would add 300 grams of water, okay. which we're going to do. But the problem is if I add the oil, it's a liquid. It's a liquid. So yeah. we just need to adjust for it. So all we're going to do is I'm going to add the oil first and my scale is set to zero. So I'm going to add 20 grams of the oil. So I'm watching the scale just to go to 20 grams. And then without setting the scale back to zero, keep it on there. And I'm going to make up the difference to get my scale to 300. Okay. So we're sticking with 300 grams of liquid. This time I'm not gonna go over. Which the oil is still fairly a small amount. It's a small liquid. amount. It's really just to kind of add a little bit more flavor to the sweet roll. When you were like figuring this out, was there a, I mean, what was the result? Was it maybe more oil or? I think you and Candace need to do that as okay. an experiment. Okay. Add <laughs> lots of sugar and yes. lots of oil okay. and see what happens. You'll have to help us. Okay. You are definitely the bread. I'll come join you. But I, I, you know, I would be curious to see, you know, cause yeah. it's, it's more than just a liquid. Yes. So. Yes. That'd be a, that'd be a fun experiment. Stay tuned. There we go. <laughs> okay. So now the same thing. I'm going to do 450 grams of flour. Half of that is going to be bread flour. Half of that's going to be all-purpose flour. So when switching to a bread, it's obviously like we've talked about this before, but it's higher protein content. Yes. So it's allowing it to be maybe a little more elasticity or what are? Yeah, it just adds a little bit to that kind of oven spring. And okay. people will ask all the time, can I use all bread flour or all all-purpose flour? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. Try it out. Experiment in your kitchen. Um, see how it turns out for you. This is just it's one of those things like. Have you guys ever heard the phrase, if it ain't, if it ain't broken, don't, don't fix, fix it? it. Like yes. this works for me all, all of the time. So I don't want to mess around with it. So again, I'm just going to the 450 here. There we go. And then it's going to go into the mixer. It's going to come on over. Now you're like, well, hold on a second, Charity. This is the chocolate extravaganza. <laughs> uh, I don't see any chocolate in there. My perceptive friends, you're right. So here's what I have found works best. All those add-ons, we're gonna do it after the first rise. Okay. And we're, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that here. So you guys can come up with all of the different concoctions that you want. I'll show you guys we did, I did a, a white chocolate walnut. Oh, yeah. I've done hazelnut chocolate before. Today we're just gonna do a cocoa chocolate chip. Okay. So, or if, you, if you're like, you know, sugar's not my thing. Mm -hmm. Like, we couldn't be friends, but if that is you, if sugar's <laughs> not your thing, I'm just teasing. If you're more of the savory person, I've done, Without the sugar, you can still add the fat, but we've done jalapeno cheddar. Oh, yeah. We've done like cream cheese and chive. I've done um, olive sun dried tomatoes, but that's a way. Like, I'm not one of those people. If you guys ask me to play Pictionary or paint anything or dance or sing, like, creativity, not my thing. Oh, whatever. But this, for me, this is, <laughs> this, where is I, this is where I can do it. Don't, I can start adding things. You, ha you have to see this. Don't tell me you don't have a creative <laughs> bone in your body. So, people just, I think. I think one, one of your goals here and one of my joys is to give people permission to just have fun, have fun in their kitchen, yes. right? Bring the family in, have fun, experiment. There's no right and wrong. And that's the same thing with, with sourdough yes. bread, right? Yes. So, okay. 
I think what we're going to do... Well, you, you really quick, you mentioned yes. this is going to be added to your second yep. So if I... I mean, is it because we are... This could affect the, the chemical reaction, or is Not it just because really. it doesn't need it? Yeah, okay. Cocoa... So I know there's acid in cocoa. Yes. Cocoa right now, you could add, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Here's what's interesting. The, the, the bacteria is creating air pockets, okay. okay? Air bubbles. Sometimes when you have these add-ins, they inhibit those bubbles from growing. Okay. So I'd rather just let the let it rise uninhibited and then add in those other things. Got it. Now for those of you out there that are like, okay, well, what about the whole wheat bread? We'll do we we need to do a 2.0 or something about brains. More to come. Yes, more to come. Because here's the tricky thing. The reason I want people to master the white flour, even though I know it's not nearly as healthy, is because it's easier. As soon as you start getting with whole grains, whole grains have the endosperm in there. They've got the bran. Well, bran will come in and slice an air bubble. So if you've ever tried to make whole wheat bread, it's just it's just denser. Yes. That's because all those good yummy nutrients in there, they're cutting those air bubbles okay. and it's kind of making that bread a little that bit. makes so much sense. A little bit yeah. more dense. Yes. So, okay, so this is done. And now I'm gonna show you guys how to do that turn and pull, which really is a really surprisingly key key step in making this bread. Um, and it's sometimes people will send me pictures and like, my bread doesn't look great. I'm like, did you do that pull and turn? And they're like, oh, I didn't. So we've got two, where's my other, here, I'm gonna grab my other loaf right here. So this one is the one that's set. So I'm just gonna wet my hands just like this because I don't want the dough to stick. But you're not worried about adding too much water. I'm like, really not, not adding. Dumping water no, right I'm here. just getting my hands wet. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull the dough out from the sides and pull it in. So I'm, let me work on it just for one second and then I'm gonna kind of show you. So I'm pulling it from the outsides and I'm pushing it in, okay? And now you can see already it's been a little less clumpy. So does that make sense? Yep. Just pull and turn. Now you technically want your dough to have sat for a few minutes. I just mixed this, okay. so it didn't really sit no. very long. But it also changed a little bit in, in yep. the look. You can see the, the difference, yeah. right? So I'm gonna do it one, I'm gonna do it on this one even though I just mixed this dough. And it's always amazing to me how much just this little technique changes the texture of the dough. Okay, so we've got two loaves. Okay. These would enter the first rise. Okay. That's six to eight hours. So through the magic of television, we are gonna show you how to do the next steps. Okay, so we're back. Okay, I'm ready. We're gonna pretend six to eight hours went by. Magic of TV, yes. it has in this bowl. It's, it's risen, it looks beautiful. So now, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna flour the counter. This is just to prevent, prevent it from sticking. Okay. And I'm just gonna, I mean, you don't have to be too gentle, but I'm just kind of trying to keep the dough together a little bit okay. while I'm, I'm scraping it out. And if you guys don't have this tool, this is, this is the number one most important must-have tool. I, I use this every day. I think this has been in almost every video for our extravaganza, so this will be the tool the of tool. the event. <laughs> okay, so the dough is a little bit sticky, which is great because we're gonna we're gonna do our add-ins now. So because it's chocolate, let's go. We just kind of sprinkle in some of this and cocoa powder. You're not even measuring. No, I, I'm, I'm loving this. I I, should I? No, 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 no. Because I think this is good. Okay, good. we're not measuring. No. So we've got a little bit of cocoa powder here. And then, these are my favorite. These mini chocolate chips, they're so hard to find anywhere else. It's the number one thing I drive here for. Well, and I, this, this is like big, this is kind of like solidified our friendship. So we met Charity, she was teaching a, a classes through the Cancer Project, which teaches people how to fight cancer by the foods that they eat. Yeah. So you would generally think, no sugar, no sweets, like, Life is no fun anymore, and you bring a balance of things and a balance of life that shows that like you can have these yeah. things and you can enjoy these things. And I'm like, this is the message that we all need to provide for ourselves. Well, you know that was that was a tricky lesson because um, you guys don't know me, I'm sure, but my husband was diagnosed with stage four cancer, and so the trauma of that is is it's real. So you want to do everything perfectly, right? Yes. So we got him and I was a nutritionist at the time. We got him on the strictest diet and I was juicing for him every day and we were I mean doing all the things right. And one day he he just looked at me and I just I could just see it. I could just feel it that he was not happy. It wasn't enjoyable. Right? It wasn't yeah. enjoyable. And you're like, well, what's life without some of this stuff? So, yeah, that is the message. It's like, understand how it affects your body. Because for me, it puts me in a coma, even though I love it. <laughs> um, but really trying to find that balance yes. between, 
you know. Yes, and as it should be, because life is meant to be enjoyed, yes. and the things that we're doing and experiencing together can all be enjoyed, yes. regardless of what path you're on. Yes, exactly. Okay, so now, I've all around guitar chocolate chips. <laughs> yes. So, so we're just gonna sprinkle some chocolate chips on there, and now I'm just using the, that stickiness of the dough to kind of let that chocolate stick in there, and I'm just using this little tool. I'm just I'm barely kneading it. I'm really just trying to shape it into a ball, and the ball is actually being shaped on the back side. Okay. So, so I'm you're kind not of, worried about what's nope, up here. No, I'm kind of pulling it and pushing it back in the center. All my little chocolates inside. Now, what you guys want to do is you want to use your hands, and you're kind of pulling it, and it's called a gluten skin. Ooh. I'm just pulling it like this. I'm forming it, and you guys can see I'm turning it and pulling it, turning it and pulling it, and there's my ball. Now. Unlike when you make cupcakes or cake, you can kind of make that dough all gross and it, this beautiful dough comes out, right? <laughs> how you shape your bread really is how the bread's going to look okay. in the end. So if you have like this side's all wonky, your it's bread will come look out that way. way. Yeah. Okay. So you just want to, again, but you guys have permission to make it however you want. So we've got chocolate chips in there. And then if you, if you guys can afford it or you want a Christmas present, a Dutch oven really is. We sing the praises of yes, a Yes, a Dutch pan. oven yes. really is the way to go. So I'm gonna take my nice round ball. I'm gonna stick it in this beautiful Dutch oven. And you've lined the pan with parchment. Yeah, I've got parchment paper in there. So there's no cleanup, you guys can already see that. There's barely any cleanup. And my second rise will be right in there. So, and sometimes I've done it where I have the second rise is on the counter and then I, because it's gotten really soft, yes. I've tried to then get it back on the parchment and then back into the pan, but you're just letting me know I, what happened here. There's so many different reasons and how people do this. For me, it's ease. What are the easiest thing to do? Another thing that I'm glad you just triggered something in my mind. Most recipes say, heat the Dutch oven up as hot as you can in the oven and then transfer your dough. Well, after a few burnt wrists and some fallen <laughs> yeah, dough, does. you're like, this is the worst idea well, and ever. Also smelling your hot pan for a while, and like, this can't be good. Yes. <laughs> so I rise it right in here, okay. and then I turn the oven on as hot as my oven will go, okay. but as soon as I put my Dutch oven in, I turn the heat down. Okay. And I've tried it in lots of different ways. It works, okay. it works fine. So now I'm not heating up something, I'm trying not to burn myself yeah. as I put it in, so I just rise it right in there and this goes straight in the oven. And this is what it will look like when you're done. So I'll show you guys how to do that. So after this is gone through the second rise, okay. roughly two to three hours. Now I do wanna say you guys, if someone's like, well can you let this rise too long? Sadly the answer is yes. What happens is if you took your lid off the pot and you see almost like a seam that's broken through, through that gluten skin, you've let it rise too long. That gluten is kind of, or sorry, the, the bacteria is kind of eaten its way through Got that it. skin yeah, yeah. and then it will collapse a little bit in the oven. So keep an eye on it. This is, an, I mean, it's kind of experimenting in your kitchen just so you've got a good feel for it. So I just don't want you to kind of set it and forget about it because it does need to be watched at least a little bit at this point. You okay. don't want it to overproof. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to score it because oh, yes. this is the, the fun little designs that we have that all over our bread. There's a classic white. Um, and you're gonna do that right before you put it in the oven. Okay. So luckily I have one ready to go. Imagine that. Right here. We'll just kind of brush some of our flour away. So what I wanted to show you guys is exactly how you're gonna score the bread. So this is what oh, I did a whole wheat bread. This is half whole wheat flour, okay. half regular flour. And this is what it looks like. I mean, you guys can see it really has doubled mm -hmm. in size. So the key to getting this sort of a shape on there, again, you guys can do anything, is flour. Okay. The flour is what really cuts through. So I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on here. This is like your paint. <laughs> yes. On your the canvas. Your canvas. There we go. Yes. So just spread the flour around. And you can make any design you want. I'm a creature of habit, and if you guys see my loaves, they always look the exact same. Well, when I see the exact those, same, those leaves, I'm like, oh, there's <laughs> charity. That's my post. breast. <laughs> so this is called a lame. Do you guys sell these here? Perfect. So come get one of these. It's just a nice sharp. If you tried this at home, if you don't have one, I hate I hate always saying you need to buy things, right? So if you have a knife at home, here's all I'm gonna say. Dig in, be determined. Because as soon as you go really slow, you'll start pulling that skin. Sure. So go for it. Otherwise, get the one The sharpness of and the style is really designed to cut through that. Where yeah. I have done it with a paring knife, but if this is something that you feel like this, you want to continue yes. doing, this, it's, again, the right tool the right makes tool. the job so And they're not terribly expensive. No. So you can cut it however you want. 
I'm just, this is my typical, I kind of do a half moon shape right there. Okay. And then I just do some slits, just like this. And again, just to remind you guys, this is gonna happen right before you put it in the oven. Okay. So my oven right now is heating up to that 500 degrees. I'm just scoring the bread. Because if I do this too early, it's going to start, keep continue rising and then kind of you got cover it. that up, right? Exactly, it kind of um, breaks that, that, you're trying to kind of keep that mold together yeah. so yeah. it rises. So this is what it's gonna look like. You stick it in the oven. Oh. And then, of course, when you pull it out of the oven, it looks like that, ready to go. Okay, so now we'll give you guys the instructions of exactly how to bake it. Here's the other tricky thing. I know you've experienced this. Every oven is different. 100%. Right? So as much as I can tell you guys what works in my oven, you really do have to figure out in, in your oven. I will tell you what works for me. I heat my oven to 500 degrees. When this goes in, I lower it to 420. Okay. I bake for 45 minutes. Okay. And then I like to take the bread out, put it right out of the Dutch ovens, put it right on the rack, and give it like three minutes to kind of get it nice. Still in the pan, but on a rack. Well, I actually take... Oh, you take with the parchment. Okay, I, I got use it. The so it's coming out of the exactly. pan. Exactly. Okay. I'm taking the whole loaf out of the pan. Now, that's another thing, you guys. I have seen so many different techniques of like, start at this temperature, then lower to this temperature, then do this. Step A, Y, and Z, and I'm like, I can't do this. So I have messed around until I'm like, this is so easy, 45 minutes, and then I just brown it in the oven. Um, part of my love of bread, you guys, is really come from a love of people. Uh, this is, the more loaves that I see that are made, the more I'm like, okay, the people are spreading love. I don't know what it is, I mean, you and I have talked about it. The, it's, and I felt like when everyone was making sourdough, it wasn't like, oh, so-and-so's is better than this, or so-and-so's, yeah. you know, they have a better recipe. It was, honestly, it felt like the community in this world is coming together yeah. with like, just this desire to create. Yes. And it's such a beautiful, touching moment when we can all just see, like, appreciate it and recognize yeah. it. Like, your time went into this. Yes. And your small attention to details made such a difference. Yeah, and my, my hope is that this can be, you guys, I, I'm gonna finish with a little personal. No, is I, that no, okay? Because I, when you, you mentioned before, the bread means so much more to my family. Yeah, it really bread. does. So, so yes, this please. is something that came about, again, because of bacteria, but my husband at the time, I can't look at sourdough bread without just thinking a little bit about my husband. He passed away last year from cancer, and when he was going through chemo, there was just not a lot of things that he could eat. And I remember he would go to chemo, his mom, his sweet mom, would, that was their time together, which was good because I really had a hard time going. It was hard for me. But when he would leave, I would bake bread. It was just something I always wanted to just give him that when he came home, that there was something that he could eat. It was one of the very few things that he could eat. And so I started making just so much bread, and I started just delivering it to people in my neighborhood constantly. And I have never found anything that says love like bread. It could be like, I'm sorry your dog died. Yes. Or I'm so glad you moved into the neighborhood. Or I'm, I'm so happy for your wedding anniversary. I mean, it didn't matter what it was, but there was just something about bread. And I'm a spiritual person and I, I love Jesus. I know we don't talk about Jesus in the we kitchen. Do. Okay, we, we do. do. But for me, when he says I'm the bread of life, it's like I am the light in the life. There's just something about it. And so my hope is not only that you guys will master it for yourselves and for your families, but once you do, that you can then take this little part of you to this world, to your neighbors, to strangers, to whomever, because this world needs love. And if it comes in the shape of bread, then all the better in my Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you for, for ending on this note. Thank you for just sharing your light. Every time Charity comes into the store, I'm like, okay, we gotta go somewhere so we can go cry together and experience just this feeling of love and devotion to each other through food. So I highly encourage you to stick around with Charity. Your Instagram is just a vibrant life. A vibrant life, yeah, or charitylighten.com. But you can find all of her goodness and her love. I know I feel a special part, but I think everyone that comes into Charity's life feel the same way. Yes, and just know that she brings so much goodness. And so even if it's through bread or for a simple just Instagram post, you just are thank a joy to this world. So thank this you sweetest. for sharing thank your you. chemistry and your vibe, like everything, all about everything. There's just so much going on thank in here. You. So thank you for sharing this and for being here and go home and make friends. Yes, go make friends. <laughs>